Hey everyone and welcome to The Philip Show. So glad to be here today. Listen, so, <clears throat> so today we're talking about journeys and we can always see where people are today, but how did they get to where they are, to where, who they became? What are their stories? You know, The Philip Show is so interested in listening to the how. And, um, and today is no different. In the village of Yellow Springs, it's also Village Wellness Month. So how do we maintain, how do we become healthy, and what part of our journey helps us map that out? So today, we are talking to Sean Craig. Sean. Hi, Philip. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really good. It's, uh, the weather is doing some amazing different things today yeah. so it's a it's an interesting place so we're talking about um healing and journeys who we are how we become who we are um and i know that a lot of people have similar stories they just may not hear them all the time or they may not know someone shares a particular journey with them and i know you're super professional um but i want to start from you know the beginning how did you like becoming Sean. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, um, thank you for asking. Uh, you know, today, you know, I have a wonderful life. Um, today, you know, I have a great career as a manager. Um, I'm the general manager of Clips of Growing Smokehouse in Yellow Springs. Um, I'm the I'm an operations manager at Sunrise Cafe. Um, I own and operate a, a small and profitable uh, business management consulting company. Mm. Um, I have an, a, an amazing and beautiful wife who is probably the kindest, most sincere person I know. Mm. Um, she is also a very successful business owner. Um, I have, I'm an active contributor uh, to my community uh, where I feel supported and trusted. Um, mm. I have healthy relationships. I have a practice that works for me in Buddhism and meditation and wow. that keeps me grounded. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's today, um, but it wasn't always like this. You know, um, I was born into addiction. Okay. Uh, both of my parents were active, uh, were addicts at the time I was born. Um, they were both alcoholics for most of their lives. Mm. Um, my, my earliest memory is being sexually assaulted by two addicts that my parents had left me with and then wow. uh, witnessing the, the violent and bloody aftermath um, when my father had returned and, and learned what had happened. Mm. And, and that was the last time I saw my father, and, and, oh. at least until I was 21. Um, and things kind of just kind of developed from there. You know, I, I grew up as an odd kid. I had uh, developed a severe case of ADD at a time and place where people didn't really understand how to handle um, ADD children. I grew up in a rural community right, um, right next door to where I live now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was beat up almost every single day and bullied. Uh, the teachers um, didn't know how to handle this kind of behavior. They didn't know how to handle me. So they uh, built a partition in, around my desk and put me in the back of the room and isolated me from the kids and just told me to stay away from them. Wow. And they, I mean, they'd still beat me up at the, the bus stop and then, you know, in the neighborhood. Um, and honestly, I, I'd go out to play with them because, you know, I'm the, I'm a, I'm a single, I'm the only child of a single mother. So like this was, I, I just wanted someone to hang out with. Yeah. And I just accepted that this is how it was, you know? Um, you mean, what, so you just thought this is life and that's all I know. This is this what it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. This, this is interaction. This is how, I, this is my role in my group of friends is I'm going to be the one that gets beat up. Um, now, I started using drugs at a very young age, as soon as I possibly could, um, and I dove into it um, like straight in heavily. It wasn't like a warm-up session. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to try a little bit of alcohol and a little bit of weed here and there. I mean, I just dove straight in, and I was staggeringly uh, intoxicated um, 
most of the time. Mm. And, and what you age know, would you say that that started? Um, I started about 15. Okay. You know, as soon as I, I mean, you know, like I said, I was kind of isolated, didn't have a lot of friends uh, to interact with. But as soon as I could come across them, I that's what, it, you know, I found them. That was my new friend. Got it. Um, when I was 16, um, you know, I was hanging out with some boys that uh, they weren't really my friends. They were just some boys that uh, I knew. Um, and, you know, we were doing everything. We were doing all the drugs and including inhalants. And, uh, and then I passed out. Mm. And one of the boys, uh, well, he, he, lit, he caught me on fire because he thought it was funny. And okay. so I burned. And I sustained third degree burns over 50% of my body and was left scarred and disfigured. And I'm still scarred and disfigured to this day. Wow. Um, and I spent months in the hospital recovering. How did that, did that impact any of um, sobriety at all? Did you stop? Did, was this like a call to action to say, okay, something is wrong here? Or did anybody just jump in and try and intervene? Um, I would say not, no, uh, it, it basically, it took a problem that I already had and amplified it to the, I can't, to the millionth degree, you know, yeah. I'm in the hospital, I'm recovering. Now they're adding uh, a heavy dose of opiates to mm. my life and which would become eventually, you know, my, my, my new life. Um, yeah. and after that, uh, you know, I struggled with uh, addiction, homelessness, in and out of jail uh, wow. for for years and years. There was one time where I managed to get um, sober for a while, and I it looked like I had my life together. I had a high power career in hotel management. Mm -hmm. um, I had a wife, I had kids, um, I had a house. I had what many would consider to be the dream. Mm -hmm. um, and I looked very much like I was successful, but I hadn't done the work yet. You know, I hadn't done the the, the self work um, to 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 heal. Um, so my in a in a sequence of events, my biological father died of a drug overdose. Uh, my best friend, uh, a well known artist and teacher in the from the local area, uh, he he died of a drug overdose, and it just sent me spiraling. Um, mm. and since I hadn't done the self work, since I hadn't built a, a you know, a, a network of, of, of healthy habits, yeah. um, I, I immediately fell back into drug addiction. Uh, within months I had lost my career, my family and myself, mm. and it wasn't too long before I was homeless and, you know, and in and out of jail again. So how did you go from what changed? Okay. What was it that changed? Well, I struggled, okay? I struggled and I went to a very dark place in my mind where I believed um, I wasn't good enough and mm. that this was the life that I had deserved. I was yeah. homeless, I was committing crimes, I was suicidal. Uh, most of the people I knew wrote me off. They laughed mm. at my condition, um, except for one person. And my very close friend, who is now my wife, came into my room one day while I was on this very destructive drug bender. And she said that I'm ready to start living my life and I want you to come with me. And I'm just waiting for you to be done with all this. Wow. And that was it. Here was this beautiful kind soul who not only saw past the addiction and the bad behavior, but actually wanted to spend her, her life with me. Um, mm. In that moment, I was kind of able to see myself um, through her eyes and mm. what I saw was someone who deserved to be happy. And so I stopped all of it. Um, I, I, I'm sorry. Well, I, I'm, I'm very interested how, cause you, you said before <laughs> you hadn't done the work and I know for people who struggle with addiction or know somebody, you know, the, the work can look different for everyone. So right. when you say you just stopped, was it like, was that your wake up and aha moment? Did you, need um what did you need besides uh, just stopping so i i i stopped first was to stop doing the drugs okay. that was the first thing um 
and I started doing the work. I started working on my sobriety. Um, I started working on my health. I started working out, eating healthy. I found out what worked, what worked for me, which is Buddhism and meditation. Mm. Um, I started working uh, very hard every single day, uh, one thing at a time, one day at a time. Uh, it wasn't easy. I, I Sometimes I slipped. Yeah. Um, but I always came back and I did the work and I came back to my sobriety and I still have to work on it every single day with hundred percent honesty and, and transparency. Yeah. And how has your, um, I would imagine your wife's now your partner in that process in that transparency. Yeah. yeah. How, 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 how do you view life now? versus the opportunities that you may not have seen back then. Who are you? Who do you believe you are today versus when you just didn't see a way out? Uh, I believe that I am capable of so much and I believe that I'm worthy of, of, of so much, as is everybody. Yeah. Um, I believe that the things that I used to think were my downfalls are they're actually my strengths, and it's you know working through the 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 harder parts of my life, and then and then coming through and and being able to see that oh it's it's not that bad. I I just had to make it through. Um, now I'm able to to see things in a much more positive light, and I'm able to use these 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 um, experiences that that I gained and I've applied them to my life now to a very effective manner to where I'm, you know, I'm, there's, there's so many things that, mm. that I'm able to do these days. You grew up, <clears throat> you said you, you, um, you were born into an addicted family. Yeah. How can somebody identify behavior versus being, um, struggling in an environment, right? Because that's a very difficult um, life to grow up in. So as somebody looking back, or you, you were talking about your teachers, what is a way that you would say where people can notice that somebody's going down the wrong path if they're an adolescent? Um, I think one very telltale sign is the somebody who's withdrawn. Somebody who is severely isolated, somebody who, um, uh, you know, it's, it's especially at the younger ages, you know, you, you can kind of, at least it was for me, uh, you know, the, 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 the isolation, the withdrawalness and uh, inability to like make meaningful uh, relationships with other people, you know, that, that was something that would, that um, would have been a telltale sign for me. Mm, yeah, because I think identifying, you know, it's, it, I think identifying that there's a challenge and understanding how to speak to the person or the situation to say, how can I help? Did you yeah. have a lot of people outside of your wife try and be a support system or reach out and say, hey, you know, I think that this is the wrong way to go. You know, what can we do? No, and that's an, the unfortunate uh, thing is, you know, transformation it, for, for, for an addict is possible, but it requires help, it requires mm -hmm. a support system. And it, in my life, um, most people that in my community, the, the ones that did see me, they kind of, there was a, um, they, they would laugh. You know, I was mm -hmm. kind of a joke. I was kind of a clown because of, the level of my intoxication but it was also the people you know like the people that i was that would hang out with you know before everybody is getting intoxicated well you know yeah it's funny and yeah. um yeah. so th no, there wasn't anybody who was saying hey man uh you're going too far buddy mm. um but i did you know and i want to say this it, it, to anybody out there who is is struggling um, or in a dark place, you know, you, you have the capacity to change already within you. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you have to do the work because no one else will do it and no one else can. Mm -hmm. um, it, if you've done, like, if you've done things or have had things done to you, 
um, that you are that you aren't proud of or ashamed of, it, that's okay because you don't have to be defined by what you did. Uh, yeah. You can choose to be defined by what you are doing now, and that choice is also yours. Um, because I'm an addict and I'm a rape survivor. Um, I'm a burn survivor and I'm an ex-convict. Um, and I'm here and I'm proud to say that I feel good. I feel loved. I feel trusted and I feel supported by my community. Mm. And there's responsibility that comes with this. And um, it, the responsibility is that, that now that I realize my capacity to transform uh, these dark things in my life into some great things, um, I have uh, like a deep sorrow for anyone who I hurt along the way. Mm. I realized that if I was acting out of confusion, um, then those who hurt me were probably also acting out of confusion. So mm. I have to have compassion for them. And I have to understand that if I can change, they could, too could change with the right conditions. Because when I fell, there were people who laughed at my condition and I was a bit of a joke. Uh, I was a clown to many. Mm. And when I started to pick up, pick myself up, there were uh, so many more people who were willing to support me and cheer me on in my community. And for that, I'm extremely grateful because um, like life, it's already hard. Yeah. And we don't all have the same starting lines, you know, uh, with compassion and understanding, we can help each other along the way. We can support each other's weaknesses. Um, we can give each other much needed boosts at, at times of need and we can just simply help each other mm. and with that support is when transformation is possible i would imagine in um in your line of work you see many people and each person has many stories um being in a small community um, do you find that there are stories that are very similar um in my line of work i am in restaurant management uh that is a very common theme in, in my industry. Got and it. yes, I see it. Um, I see it at its beginning stages. I see it at its ending stages. I see it at its recovery stages. I mean, that's the pro and it's, I see it every day. And I know that the community came and became a source of, uh, um, uh, well, it became a community, <laughs> a thriving yeah. community for you to, uh, to be in as a, as a community. What can we do to make sure that we maintain a healthy, I guess, relationship with, I guess, with each other, specifically around addiction? Um, so I think as a community, it is important to uh, have a, a, a compassion and understanding um, for the individual addicts, uh, mm. for the, for addicts in general, um, a, but also a, um, a healthy, um, distance in the fact that you're not enabling, mm. um, because enabling is, is one of the worst things that you can do for an addict. Yeah. If you know, you're giving them the tools to destroy themselves, I promise you they will until you take the tools away or give them a reason not to destroy themselves. Uh, the self-destructive behavior isn't because they like it. It's because they don't feel like they deserve anything else but to hurt themselves. They don't actually love themselves. And the addict just simply needs to be shown how to love themselves. Um, and that takes time and it takes people and it takes support. I 100% I agree. And I love the cause and effect of holding people accountable you know, because if there's no impact of behavior, whatever that may be, that's a form of enabling, yes. you know? So sometimes people have to see what the effect is, what this will do, I, I cause this. Now, what does, that, what does that mean? But yeah, do you think it's hard or is it, is it difficult being in such a, um, such a close knit community and finding your way from one person, <laughs> your journey from shattered to restored, if you will. Is it hard in the same community to do that? Um, I think it was difficult at first because I wasn't ready to be transparent. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready to be 
uh, I, I still was ashamed. Mm. I would still hide, I, you know, um, but once I became transparent, once I didn't really, doesn't, it, the, my addictive behavior in my, my, the life that I had lived as an addict, once it didn't hold its grip on me anymore, it mm. became much easier. Now, there are those who will always, uh, you know, for any addict or anybody uh, who has come from a dark past and has done some things that are not, you know, savory in their lives, there are going to be people who uh, w would like to hold you back. And there are going to be people who don't support you. And for whatever reason, whether you hurt them or whether they heard something about you, and that's going to happen and that's okay. Uh, that's, that's just human nature. I, my advice to anybody who is dealing with that kind of thing, who is trying to elevate themselves is just remember that you are the one who defines you and you can be defined, like, as I said, by what you're doing now. And you talked about, <clears throat> you talked about doing the work and I just want to kind of get back to that. Sure. So I know you said you um, practice Buddhism. Mm -hmm. now, is, is that the process and doing the work? Did you need a recovery program? I did. Um, I so Buddhism is where I started. Uh, Buddhism itself, for if you if you don't know about Buddhism, uh, the Buddhism itself is a recovery program. Buddhism okay. is a it's it's a uh, philosophy of a way to live your life without suffering. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, a process that goes along with it. It in it in itself is a, a recovery program. However, I use the program of refuge recovery, uh, which is a Buddhist based recovery program that takes the eightfold path of Buddhism and applies it to a uh, step program that's much like the 12 step programs that you know of. Mm. Now, why did you decide to go through that program? Um, well, so Buddhism is something that's worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, I was brought up in churches, you know, I, my, the it, churches just didn't quite work for me. And a friend of mine, uh, years ago, uh, Aaron Sari, who's here from, he's lived here in Yellow Springs. Uh, I was at the, one of the low, low points of my life and I reached out to him for help. And he started to kind of minister me to me a little bit. Mm. Um, and he said, Hey, I think this might actually work for you. Try this out. And he gave me some books on Buddhism and I started reading them and started practicing it. And immediately it kind of, I, I saw an immediate like change. I, I, I wouldn't say a change, but an understanding that could, uh, that helped affect the change. And because of that groundwork, um, when I got serious about the sobriety, I looked for something that, that had that at its core and uh, refuge recovery was that. I like when you um, I like the phrase you used when I got serious about sobriety. Yeah. And I think that is such a difficult point to get to, you yeah. know, and it's again, it's different for everybody. But, you know, some people just need to know what's possible, you know, as a, a lot of times as as an addict, you know what you want to change, but you don't know if that's possible, you know, and and I loved how you said serious about sobriety because there's such a decision, you know, it's like, maybe I don't, I know what I want to do. I might not know how, but I know a decision has to be made. And that decision can come in so many different ways. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Hmm. So for somebody who is, um, so for somebody who's listening now, um, who may be struggling themselves, what would you tell them about where to start? I want to fix my life. I don't know what to do right now. Yeah. Um, well, I would say the, the first thing to do is to start talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, it start just start talking about it. That's all to me the first step. Um, there are plenty if if addiction is what you're struggling with. Um, there are lots of uh, twelve step programs, especially in this area. Uh, they they may or may not be for you, but they are a great place to start to find out if they are. 
to find other people who have been down that path that 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 you've struggled with that it's there's other people like that um i was like that and uh those stories are often very 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 similar mm -hmm. they start out in pain they end in excruciating pain and eventually there is release and the this the release the release is possible um but it comes from you you have to make the decision and you have to do the work and you have to go out and get it and find your uh community that's going to support you and um work through it yeah find your community who all of these are so um intentional yes you know you have to go find you have to do the work you have to and it goes comes back to you know i i have to decide you know and i think once somebody is, I guess, transparent with themselves to say, I'm deciding to do this, then I think searching for the how can be, be a little bit easier. Yeah, for sure, hmm. for sure. So tell us again where all the places, look, you, you said all the places you were, <laughs> I got tired. <laughs> like, oh. um, tell us again um because i just i just really enjoy your story thank and, you and um and i love the aspect of i'm not what i've been through you know yeah. i love that aspect and i love meeting people and hearing who they are and looking at them it's like i i would have never i did not know that i think there's a value to people once you hear their story you know it's like wow and it's encouraging. So tell us again, everything that you do. So right now I'm the um, general manager of Calypso Grill and Smokehouse in Yellow Springs. Um, it's a very successful restaurant. Um, we do a great job. I'm proud of uh, my, my the staff. I'm proud of my, my owner. He's an amazing uh, owner. One of the most compassionate people that I've ever worked for in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also in operations management at Sunrise Cafe, also by the same owner, separate restaurant, separate business. Um, and those are like, those would say, I'd say I call those my main gigs. Uh, and then I am the owner and operator of a small, um, a small uh, business management consulting business. Mm. Uh, and it, um, that's essentially um, a, a company that is, is, um, you know, marketing driven, it's kind of, it's, it's main facet is, is marketing. Uh, but there's a, some back end management things that, uh, that I offer as well. Um, and then, you know, I take part in the, the marketing and, um, with, with my wife's business as well. That is wonderful. Well, you are busy, yeah. <laughs> but I, but I love the, um, I love the passion that you speak from where you speak, um, and the encouragement that your story provides and the insight to know that one's journey can continue as they continue to decide you know yeah. um yeah that's great well thank you go ahead i was gonna say and it also um you know it's not just it also requires a little bit of assistance mm -hmm. from the community at large uh yeah. we're only as strong as our weakest person and if we allow people to struggle um, when they are clearly, clearly calling for help, yeah. uh, then, you know, that's on us. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are, um, a lot of people aren't ready to have that conversation. The people that made either, you know, yeah. um, and I think that takes courage on both people, you know, it's courageous to help somebody up. It takes yeah. courage to speak into that place that may be delicate. It takes courage um, listening to that if you're the one being approached. So I think you're 100% right. And as a community, I think that um, in any community it is, but I think there are some courageous people <laughs> that um, find value in showing that type of courage. Yeah. Sure. Thank you for being on The Phillips Show. I'm so excited that you, um, you're here and you're just sharing. Thanks, Philip. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, so you hear that Sean um, just sharing his life and his journey. And this is how the healing can begin. When you know things are possible, when you know change can happen, when you hear 
these stories and you also provide that courage to say, I think as a community, we can do this for other people as well. I think there's tremendous, tremendous, tremendous um, awareness. And I hope you found um, that same inspiration as I did. So as usual, thank you for watching. And remember, you are the best you in the world. We'll see you next time on The Phillips Show. Don't wait.